So with everything that's going on with this war on Disney or, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, we say all the time, the biggest reason why DeSantis is able to get away with what he's able to get away with is because the Democratic Party in Florida is almost completely feckless and ineffective. No, and no, they don't. They're not existent. Yeah. And they have a lot. And, and, and technically, they do have more uh, up until recently, anyway, more registered Democrats than Republicans. But the way this party has been run for the past several years, as we've really ventured into this, uh, th there is no, I, and I hate the word resistance, but the way that DeSantis is allowed to ascend has as much to do not just with the fact that his authoritarianism is embraced by millions around the country, but because there is no, no alternative. We do not mm -hmm. present any real alternative here in Florida. And if you think you need any more proof, it looks very likely like the Democratic ticket for governor is going to be the same one it was eight years ago. That's not good. Just saying. We've made so so much progress here. Um, Kat, let me ask you, what are, what are you here? Oh, I mean, I know you hear the same news we hear, but this whole um, culture war between DeSantis and Disney, which is obviously a big thing here, um, has now turned into something that is going to penalize the regular people that live in the areas surrounding Disney World. So it's like some sort of pissing match that's now going to hurt regular people. It's not going to hurt the people that make money at Disney. They'll be fine. You know, so I'm just curious, like, what do you hear about that over there? Well, it's not so much what I hear about in the UK. It's more that I, I cover a lot of nerd media on my channel in terms of not sure if you're aware, most people who discuss movies, comics, and video games on YouTube are very right wing. And recently they've been promoting DeSantis a lot. And before they used to say they hated politics, like keep politics out of my media. But now it's like, we love DeSantis because he's standing up to woke Disney. And this is something I spoke about on Twitter. And I know, I, I, cause I talk about class reductionism a, t a tiny bit, because I think a lot of people believe that everyone fundamentally hates corporations and corporate exploitation. And if we only like channeled that a bit more and, and maybe someone on the right like DeSantis could channel that, but I don't actually think that's what he's doing, especially when I hear these people, he's attacking Disney as a Trojan horse to attack transgender and LGBT rights. He's not attacking Disney because he hates corporations, but even though you can maybe, you know, you're talking about, um, I forgot the exact name for it, but basically that territory of Florida that Disney Reedy basically Creek. runs. It's Reedy Creek. Yeah. And mm. it basically runs as, as its own small government. And obviously, like, I completely like disagree with that. It's, it's pretty insane. Like, it's like an old mining town or something like that. Um, but at the same time, DeSantis isn't attacking Disney because they're a corporation that, you know, treats its workers badly or the CEOs, you know, exploit the, the labor of, of the employees. There. He's doing it because it's a cultural issue against mainly trans people. But obviously it ties in nicely with the don't say gay thing. It's just all about demonizing disney and it's you know you probably saw on twitter okay groomer is the big thing i covered it a couple of weeks ago and loads of people in my comments are calling like me a groomer because you're saying that maybe children should understand that trans and gay people exist but that's the whole war at the moment and like you were saying um just to, to tie it back in terms of the uk i don't think many people know who DeSantis is but i do actually think DeSantis might be worse than donald trump because donald trump just because he doesn't have any coherent ideology, he was just like a useful mark for old neocons from the Bush administration to do what they wanted. But with DeSantis, I'm a bit more worried about him specifically because he does have maybe not a coherent ideology in terms of he really, really believes these things, but he presents it in a, mu in a way that's much more palatable to a lot of ordinary people. Unlike Donald Trump, who even if you, I think this is the big thing in the UK. A lot of people didn't like, didn't like Donald Trump in the UK, not so much because they hated his politics, but they hated who he was. If you had someone like DeSantis, who's more like, I don't know, like a gentleman, is more like a smart, you know, smarmy politician, like just a stereotypical one. I think he can actually get a lot more done once he's in power. And the way he frames it is often smart because he acts like he's standing up to like the corporations or the woke left who have taken over all the corporations rather than, you know, I don't think he has that appeal maybe broadly with people who just hate capitalism or something like that. But I do think if he got into power, he would be a lot worse than Donald Trump, especially because from what I'm seeing at the moment with Joe Biden's popularity, it doesn't look like the Democrats are going to be having any good elections leading up to um, 2024. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to be ugly, and especially here in Florida. Um, I don't hate him as much as people do. But remember, we had Rick Scott for eight years here. So mm. who is, he is the most evil, criminal, 
despicable human being that I can even think of. So coming after that, we have a low bar here, very low bar. But I agree, he is smarter than Trump and he's brilliant politically. DeSantis mm-hmm. is brilliant. Yes. The fact that what you're saying is that people are now hearing of him because he's standing up to woke Disney. He, it's like you're was, watching like a master class in his, you know, running for president in 24. And again, this all has to do with the fact that the Democratic Party would rather screw non-corporate progressives than to allow the inevitable takeover. Yeah. You know, we put out something on social media the other day that you see all of the normie Democrats constantly crapping on the GOP. But the second they need GOP voters to stop non-corporate candidates like Nina Turner or India Walton, oh, you better believe they're there to get them. And they won't hide it. They're very adamant. And they'll go so far as to call somebody like Nina Turner an anti-Semite. And that's why we're going to Cleveland this weekend. <laughs> gotta, we we got to bring the troops. Got to gotta help her out. And th- that is really what it's about. Um, yeah. The ascension of somebody like DeSantis, I think, directly coincides with the fact that populism is here to stay. The American people are hip to the game now. They know how they're being played for fools and are no longer going to be fooled. And they're going to get it one way or the other. I I said all the way back in 2015, I said, you're going to have a political revolution in this country. You're either going to get it peacefully with Bernie or you're going to get it violently with Trump. You just make the choice which way it's going to be, because this neoliberalism of the past 40 plus years, it's going to end. And the question is, how's it going to end? Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.